everyone. It's Laura again with ELB Consulting and I am checking in to see how you did on your water intake. On Monday we discussed um, to incorporate water into your daily life and it's been five days and if you remembered I mentioned it takes three days for your body to adapt to any new change you do. Um, so one of the things, if you drink more water, you have to go to the bathroom more often. But if you've been increasing your water over five days, then that increase to go to the bathroom might have already decreased. So I'm just wondering who drank their water and who noticed they had to go to the bathroom, maybe excreted more toxins and that kind of subsided. But I also wanted to not only check in with your water intake, but to answer a few questions that I received regarding water from the first video. Uh, just to review from the first video, um, the amount of water that we all should be drinking is your body weight divided by two, and that's the amount of ounces of water you should be drinking a day. Um, the, bare, the minimum amount of water is 64 ounces. Um, which is recommended by the USDA, ADA, American Heart Association, but I like to increase it to your body weight divided by two, and that's the amount of ounces of water you drink. So here are a few tips and tricks that we can do with water, especially for those who do not like to drink water. A lot of us do like that carbonated LaCroix, seltzer waters uh, that we like to drink, but those are very dehydrating. Caffeine and carbonated waters do dehydrate you, so you do need to replenish your body with plain water to rehydrate it. And I told you why in the first video, which you're more than welcome to head back over there and look. But for those that do not like to drink water, there's a few things we can do. One, I always get the question between about um, room temperature versus cold water. Cold water does increase your calorie expenditure a little bit. It, um, your body has to bring that water to room temperature, therefore you do tend to burn a little bit more calories. So some people like the feeling of cold water that just feels like it satisfies their tongue a little bit more. Uh, but warm water you actually uh, absorb and hydrate faster. So if you know you don't like to drink a, a lot of water, then drink warm water because your body will absorb it faster and hydrate you faster. So that is trick number one. Drink warm water if you don't want to drink a lot of it. Um, the other thing is if you drink water first thing in the morning, uh, preferably warm water, if you drink water first thing in the morning, you will crave more water because your body loves to get water on a consistent basis. So the body is like a plant. You need to water the plant more often to let that plant grow. Well, your body and your muscles are the same exact way. Remember, your body is 77% water. So the more water that you put into the body, the more muscle will grow or move or um, it's more efficient because we have type one, type two fibers in our muscles. And if we give it water, they'll move more efficiently and you'll burn more calories or you won't have as much achy pains or joint pains or just feel fatigued and tired. So you need to give that body consistent water just like you do a plant. It needs to grow with that water and hold the water. Um, so drinking water more consistently throughout the day will also help. But here are some other tricks just in case you don't like water. Mint leaves. You can add mint leaves to your water and your body will absorb that water so much quicker and it gives that little flavor for the taste buds that make it crave it a little bit more. So just adding a few mint leaves to your water will hydrate the body more. If you're not a minty person, cucumbers do the same thing, limes do the same thing, and lemons do the same thing. So you could add lemons and limes uh, to your water and it gives that little bit of flavor to trick your brain thinking you're actually drinking something sweet even though you're not and it helps hydrate the body. The other thing you can do is basil leaves. Now you gotta be careful with basil leaves. You can add basil leaves to your water. It will hydrate it very quickly, sometimes too quickly, and you'll have to run to the bathroom. So be careful with the basil leaves because it is, um, it does release toxins pretty quick sometimes. So if you do basil leaves, maybe only put one in, maybe two, maybe every couple days. Um, so basil leaves is another good way to increase water hydration into the body. Um, I mentioned in the first bit video regarding exercise and some of the things that we can do for exercise is one, you want to make sure your body's hydrated because once again, that body loves to have water 
and it's like that plant. So if the plant doesn't have water, it can't grow and it can't get strong. Same thing with your muscle mass. If your muscle doesn't have water, it's not ready to go walk. It's not ready to go run or work out. So you want to make sure that you hydrate your body with eight ounces of water 30 minutes before you work out. Make sure those muscles are hydrated because when the, if the muscles are hydrated, then they will build. And when you build a muscle, your metabolism gets faster and you get stronger around the joints and you have less knee pain, uh, joint pain, inflammation in the body. So you want to make sure that that body is hydrated. So eight ounces, 30 minutes before you work out. And then the other factor when it comes to exercise, and it's funny, I'm seeing everybody walk by and run by and nobody has water bottles. The other important piece to exercise and water is drinking every 15 minutes. That body depletes water so quickly because you sweat it out or um, you didn't have a lot of water to begin with or you're dehydrated. So you want to make sure you replenish the water every 15 minutes. Now, I always get the question of when should you have Gatorade? Um, usually after anything over an hour of activity, or if it's really hot, we may need to replace your electrolytes. But if you're not going over an hour, then drinking plain water every 15 minutes during your string training or aerobic activity is highly recommended. And then the last thing uh, piece to exercise and water intake is ideally what you're supposed to do, especially if you sweat or exert a lot of um, energy during your workout, is you wanna weigh yourself before and weigh yourself after. And you want to drink the water in the weight that you've lost. I know it's kind of sad, right? You, you're all excited that you lost two pounds after a run. But if you weigh yourself before and you weigh yourself after and you've lost that two pounds, you're supposed to continue to drink water until you get your body weight back where it was. You don't want to lose water weight because once again, if that muscle's dehydrated, we're not gonna burn as many calories and we're gonna have all that joint pain and achiness and feelings. So you really wanna monitor your weight for when you exercise because you want to replenish that water weight. You do not wanna replenish fat weight, but you do wanna replenish that water weight. So just to review for exercise, you want to drink water um, 30 minutes before you work out. You wanna drink water every 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be a lot. Um, every 15 minutes, a couple sips, usually about two to four ounces, depending on how much sweating you're doing and what you're doing. And then you wanna make sure that if your weight did change after your workout, and this is usually cardio, that you drink the water to get your weight back to normal. And you will lose the weight later, but you don't wanna lose the weight and the water weight right after you exercise. Um, if you work out more than an hour, then yes, maybe electrolyte, Gatorade, um, some of those drinks might help with the electrolytes. Uh, salt tabs, you can do that too, but that's a whole nother discussion. We'll talk about it on a different day. I just, like I said, I wanted to answer a few questions with water off my first video that I received. So thank you all for watching it and asking these fabulous questions. Um, the last, well, not the last, but Diet Coke. You can see there's people, there are a few comments about Diet Coke. Diet Coke does not count as a water intake. And I wanna say why, I think some of us know, but one of the reasons why is sugar substitutes. And sugar substitutes are not only found in Diet Coke, but they're found in pretty much all of our foods, whether it is sucralose, uh, fructose, frucolose, uh, um, zorbidol, uh, stevia, all of those, aspartame, all of those are sugar substitutes. And the problem that I have with sugar substitutes, some of them are considered safe, by the USDA and the ADA, American Dietetic Association. Um, but what I have a problem with it is they are very, uh, they, they are very sweet. They taste very sweet. And when you eat or drink, the first place you feel it is on your tongue. And that sends a message to your brain on whether or not you're hungry or you're thirsty. So if you're drinking Diet Coke or even uh, Propel that has sucralose in it, you automatically have a sweet taste on that tongue and it's gonna trigger that brain to think, oh, I need to eat or oh, I want something sugary or oh, I want something salty. So the problem is, is sugar substitutes are three to 500 times more sweeter than plain sugar. So if you have something with a sugar substitute, yes, it's lower calories, yes, it's lower in sugar, but it's actually gonna make you crave more sugar because of your taste buds. So if we got up in the morning and we worked out and we had Propel water, which a lot of B vitamins that give us some energy, yes, B vitamins do that. We'll talk about that later in another video. But yes, it works, but there's sucralose in it. Um, I think it's sucralose, but it doesn't matter. Um, if there's a sugar substitute in the drink you're drinking or in the, in the half and half you put in your coffee um, or in the cereal you're eating, then at three, four o'clock, 
when you're dehydrated and you have a little bit of a sugar uh, craving, you go for a chocolate chip cookie. Well, that chocolate chip cookie does not equal the same sweetness as a sugar substitute because a sugar substitute is sweeter than the regular chocolate chip cookie. So that regular chocolate chip cookie is going to lead to two or three or four until your sugar crashes and you need to eat more to bring that back up. So back to the question regarding Diet Coke. It definitely does not count as water, but it makes you more dehydrated because of that sugar substitute. And when you are dehydrated and you have that sweetness or that sugar left on the tongue, it's going to make you crave more sugar. The only thing we can do to decrease those sugar substitute is to, yes, you got it, drink more water. So if you have something with stevia or Splenda or aspartame in it, drink the two cups of water, plain pure water to rehydrate the body so your body doesn't continue to crave sugar. Your body wants to be homeostasis. It wants to be balanced. It loves to be balanced. So if you have something really sweet, your body's gonna crave more sweet. If you have something salty, your body will crave sweet to get back into the center, to get back into balanced. Um, I had a question, why are we craving more sugar when we're home and we're moving less? The reason why we're craving more sugar is because we are terrified. We have all these emotions. We have all these fears, all these um, strange emotions going on right now with being quarantined and everything like that. We, we got a lot of emotions going on. When you're emotional, your body craves serotonin. And when your body craves serotonin, it needs to calm down. And one of the ways we know to calm ourselves down is actually to eat because there's a lot of serotonin produced from foods, mostly from carbohydrates. So when we're stressed, the first thing we go to is something simple, something easy for our body to eat and digest, and that's usually sugar. And that produces serotonin to help us calm us down. When sometimes we can just go for a glass of water and we get the same effect, but our brain doesn't think like that because of the last thing that we had on our taste buds. Does that make sense? So we're craving more sugar because some of us are a little bit more emotional and our body is wanting to get back to our normal. They're wanting to get back to the, um, that calmness state. And sugar does that for us. So am I here to tell you not to eat sugar? No, because I'm going to do a whole video on sugar because that is one of our nutritional challenges coming up. But for right now, you can eat the sugar, but there's things we can do to manipulate the body so you don't crave more sugar. One of them is definitely to drink more water. Absolutely drink more water. Um, two, you can have the sugar, but make sure you're eating it with a protein type food, some type of meat, egg, lentils, um, beans, um, cheeses. Uh, the other thing you can do is make sure you have that sugar with a fat. A lot of us are actually fat phobic. A lot of us don't eat a lot of fat and fat actually burns fat. So if you have that sugar with an avocado or nuts, seeds, olive oils, um, some of the time, uh, our body will balance, fat will balance out the blood sugars and so will protein. The other third nutri nutrition or uh, nutrient that stabilizes blood sugars is fiber. The more vegetables you consume, the definitely the more balanced your blood sugars will become. I have totally got off on a wrong topic here. We are still on water. But my point is, is there are ways to manipulate the body to decrease sugar. We, I will definitely do a video on that. Um, cause that is important for us to decrease sugar. Cause when we decrease sugar, we decrease inflammation. Um, but in the meantime, water. So if you are craving a lot of sugar right now, just keep drinking water. I cannot stress water is the most important nutrition, uh, nutrient for our body. Um, it helps it burn more calories, helps fight off inflammation. It helps us feel better, helps decrease headaches, especially on a day with a lot of pollen. Um, helps us exercise, it helps us move, it helps us sleep better. Um, it just loves water. So just to recap everything we talked about, um, continue on your water challenge. Next week is a new challenge. And I will try to start announcing when I'm going live for our next nutrition challenge. But I want to continue with this one through Easter. So continue to drink water, your body weight divided by two. That's the amount of ounces of water you need to drink a day. Make sure you drink that water consistently. Make sure you drink water morning, mid-morning, uh, early afternoon, late afternoon, and into the evening. And I showed some tips and tricks on how to make sure you're getting enough water, whether it's a big water cooler or you put water bottles on your countertop or you just simply count the amount of ounces you're drinking. There's a lot of fun water apps out there where you can grow gardens and stuff like that. It's on your MyFitnessPal. It's on your Apple Watches, Samsung, um, your phone, whatever you have. So make sure you drink your water consistently. 
If you know you are a Diet Coke person drinker or you love your LaCroix or you love the seltzer water, just make sure you drink two, or wine, I'll throw wine and alcohol in there as well. Just make sure you're drinking two cups of water to replenish it, rehydrate the body before you have another one. Um, coffee too. If you don't like to drink water and you're looking for ways to drink less water but get more bang for your buck, add lemon, limes, mint leaves, a little bit of basil, not too much though. Uh, warm water will definitely hydrate the body faster than cold water. Um, those are just some easy ideas. And then I think that was all the questions I have. Uh, if you have any more questions regarding water or you want more suggestions or ideas, just please let me know. Leave a comment below. Um, if not, then I look forward to seeing you all on Monday for my week number two nutrition challenge while we're quarantined. Ways to increase our immune system to help it become stronger to fight off any type of virus, cold, or um, chronic disease, pretty much. So I look forward to seeing everybody on Monday, and I hope everybody has a wonderful Easter and a beautiful weekend. Enjoy some sun, because vitamin D definitely helps digestion, but we'll talk about that later too. And um, this was fun. Thank you very much. Everybody have a great day. Bye. And thanks for joining me. I'm finally reading this. I have glasses now. Let's see. Christy, hello again. And Emily, hi. Eric, hello. Oh, hello, Cheryl. How are you doing? So thank you all for joining me and um, have a great day. Bye.